shepherd friends and welcome welcome to worship my name is pastor bryce and on behalf of joe and william well done william i had to do a double take on the title of your piece la cinquenta teen i thought it said la cinco quarantine so thank you for that but i, I got a little scared for a second so glad to have you with us matthew in our sound booth pastor Renee, sister tashina and our praise band we are so glad to have each and every one of you gathered here with us and everybody at home, thank you for joining us for worship. I have just a few brief announcements before we dive in. And that first one is, we are stoked to share our Holy Week schedule with you all. We will begin our Holy Week with three worship services on Palm Sunday, all in person and online. Our Monday, Thursday service will be only online. Our Good Friday service will be here in person as well as online. And then Easter Sunday, in person and online and in the parking lot. We ask you to start praying now for good weather. You can find the exact times on the back of your bulletin as well as our website and Facebook for that. We are so excited that with spring in the air, we look forward to finishing our Lenten journey and celebrating the resurrection of our Savior. Lent in a bag supplies are still available if you haven't gotten those for our midweek Lenten services. You can stop by the office and grab that if you still haven't gotten it. Those are for our family faith connection moments. For families of all shapes and sizes, that is for you. All of our Lenten services will be held online going forward as they have for the past two weeks. Those are set to go live Wednesday evening. Stay tuned for the emails and to find that on Facebook and YouTube. Let's see here. Also, our Lenten offerings. Our goal for our Lenten offerings is to raise just over $4,500. And those offerings will be going to our partner congregation and the students who uh, are a part of that to send nine of them to school. Not every nation is lucky, like the United States, to send their students to a, K, to a full K through 12 school uh, without added tuition. Tanzania, it's about $500 after third grade uh, to send a student to school. Our hope is to send nine students. At present, we're just at over $2,500, which means that we are over halfway to our goal with just over halfway through Lent. So we've got a few more weeks to get to that $4,500 goal. Uh, our Shepherd Book Study will meet this Wednesday and Thursday on Zoom. Sister Tashina will send out a link for that this week. If you have not signed up for that, I suggest you reach out to Sister Tashina. It's a good book that we're working on. It's called One Coin Found. Uh, and it is written by a, uh, <clears throat> a pastor who is a part of the LGBTQI uh, community um, and how that, faith, and how that um, has shaped her, her call and her life. And last thing, we have two uh, gathering initiatives uh, for supplies. We are collecting, let's see here, hot cereal like oatmeal for open hands in the midway. Uh, and the other one is paper products for the Ralph Reader food shelf in Moundsview servicing the Moundsview area school district. You can drop all of those things off here at church and then we will get them to their respective destinations. Did I miss anything? Yep, and you've already seen the slide for Holy Week, so if you missed it, if it went by too fast, make sure you check the back of your bulletin for those exact times as well. All right, with that being said, dear ones, I invite you to clear your minds to take a deep breath in with me and breathe it out 
Breathe in and out. I invite you to center your hearts and your minds as we now enter our time of worship. Friends, I invite you to pass the peace of Christ with those that you rolled into church with this morning and those that you are gathered with at home. I invite you to extend that peace now. May the peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. God's peace to you, dear ones. Very good. One thing I did forget to mention. About 20 minutes ago, we had some problem with our cameras where they went dark on us. So if that happens, you might see our frame shift from a departed one and then zoomed in, but know that we have done everything that we can, and if that happens, you'll just see the, the angle of how you are seeing worship change a little bit, but we're doing, we've done everything that we can. All right, with that being said, I invite us to join our hearts as we sing in them or out loud at home for our gathering song, The Heart of Worship. It's all about you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Praise Band, for that lead-in. That was beautiful. Will you bow your heads and center your hearts and minds as we enter a time for our opening prayer? Holy God, life is sometimes like a giant spider web, and we seem to get caught and entangled in its threads, not knowing which way to turn or how to get ourselves out from under the dilemmas in which we are trapped. Lord, you know that so many of these traps are our own creation, coming out of our own stubbornness and fear. We find it much easier to turn our back on people in need. We hope that the problems will simply just go away. Forgive us when we decide not to become involved in the solution, when we would rather back off or back away from helping. Give us an extra measure of courage and strength along with your forgiving love, that we may again place our whole trust in you and operate in this world, seeing injustices, bringing your hope and mercy in love in all the places we find ourselves. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And our psalm for this week is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right and rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. And the fear of the Lord is pure and enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than they, uh, they are than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your spirit warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their error? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Great. Oh, so for our children's message portion of our worship time, I have a story about going to church, and I need your help. All right, we're gonna Mad Libs this. I need a name. Anybody? What? Pastor Renee. Pastor Renee, all right. This is gonna be interesting. I need a thing. Lunch. I need a place. Hawaii, all right. All right, I need another name. Hazel, can you help me out? What's a good name? William, all right. I need a number. Seven. Seven, okay. I need, an, I need a number, of, so animals, plural. 
Yes, Hazel. Dogs. I need a store's name. Target. All right. And then I need an amount of money. The bigger, the better. 17 million. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> our story about going to worship. One day, Pastor Renee was going to the temple to make a sacrifice, which is something that you give to God. It can be because uh, it can be because you want to worship God, or it can be because you've done something wrong. And for Pastor Renee, it was because she did something wrong. She stole a lunch from Hawaii. And when Pastor Renee got to the temple, Pastor William went out to meet her. And when he heard about the stolen lunch, he told Pastor Renee that she would need to bring seven dogs. <laughs> Yes, so, and she goes, seven dogs? Pastor Renee was in shock. Seven dogs. Hmm. So Pastor Renee went out to the open temple grounds to visit Target. It was right there in the temple. Seven dogs. It was going to be easy to find seven dogs at Target just out in the temple here. However, seven dogs cost $17 million, which was twice as much as it should have been. What was Pastor Renee going to do? Oh, my goodness. Well, that sounds like a normal day at church, right? That sounds all like oh, how it is when I go to worship, right? Yeah? Maybe? No? Hazel's giving me a look that says, not true. Well, this is how, kind of how it was when Jesus showed up to the temple and they were selling crazy things out in the temple for sacrificing, um, which they did sacrifices in temple. That was normal for church then, but selling them inside the temple grounds changed what worship looked like, and Jesus got kind of upset about this, which Pastor Bryce is going to read for you after a, after a while here. But he was saying this is not how we worship God. By having it all about the money and the interaction of that, that costing $7 million for dogs at Target for sacrificing, Something also tells me Pastor Renee would not be sacrificing dogs. Um, <laughs> well, that's what came. Um, and so Jesus teaches us that, that worshiping God is about God and our relationship with God, not about spending the money to, for the sacrifices and the exchanges that took place. Because people were taking advantage of other people, which isn't very cool and not very fun. And we are called to stand in opposition to that. So, which means we're against people being taken advantage of as Christians. But anyways, Pastor Bryce will probably tell us some more about all the things. All right, will you all pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship. We thank you um, for all the different ways that we can worship. And we thank you that you teach us what it looks like to worship you and to take care of other people. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Our gospel text for this morning comes out of the book of John, the second chapter, beginning in the 13th voice. Wow. Verse. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as you are able. And I will do my level best to refrain from getting it wrong. Now the Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Now making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. 
And he also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. And after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you all, dear ones. How good it is to be gathered here in person. Our numbers continue to grow as the days get warmer. And for those of you who are gathered at home, while we cannot see your faces, we are glad that you are with us there. I thank our God when I remember you and the work that you and I and we have all been called to. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity to gather in whatever fashion we can together. Crack us open and make us raw. And as the psalmist writes, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be ever pleasing to you. Amen. Do you guys ever get angry? Hazel's shaking her head real fast. Yeah. I get angry, but I mean like mad. Paul, do you ever just get mad? Yeah. Have we ever gotten so angry? Have you ever gotten so angry that all you want to do is scream? I think maybe yes. There is catharsis that is found in just screaming and getting it out because there's nothing else that that seems that we can do. It has the ability to cool us down quicker than just getting it out. There's a vulnerability in this, though, as well. That might permit someone to see us do this. This release of emotion. Jesus got angry. But he didn't just yell. Have you ever stopped and read this and thought, well, there goes the neighborhood. I mean, Jesus didn't get upset. Like, he just got downright mad. This is our proverbial bull in the china shop, Jesus. And for me, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with Jesus getting angry. This is one of those stories that shows up in all four of the Gospels. And while Matthew, Mark, and Luke have this story popping up at the near end of Jesus' ministry, the last time he enters Jerusalem. John has this one immediately after Jesus' first miracle. Now, while the Jesus portrayed in Mark would urge the disciples not to tell the people who he was, the Jesus that John would have us see and read about boldly declares to those around them around him that i am the bread of life the light of the world the good shepherd the way the truth the life the true vine you see each of the gospels paints somewhat of a different picture of jesus one is teacher one is prophet one is miracle worker one as the Son of God. It makes me think of the different hats that we wear. Now, one piece of biblical trivia for you is that we often talk about Jesus' public ministry as being three years long. But how do we know that it was three years long? Luke tells us that Jesus was about 30 when he started his public ministry, but it didn't say, and it lasted about three years. 
We know by the amount of Passovers that Jesus experienced with the disciples. And in John, it talks about three Passovers. That's how we know that Jesus' ministry lasted about three years. Which also brings us to our setting this morning. You see, Jesus, upon entering Jerusalem, did what most observant Jews would do and go straight to the temple, where he would make offerings and where he would make sacrifices. Now, an offering at the temple mandated a half a shekel, which is a Jewish coin. The only problem is Jerusalem and the surrounding areas were under Roman rule, and they did not use shekels. So in order to follow the law, they needed to exchange their money. Simple enough, straightforward, right? Anybody here ever travel and exchange those traveler's checks in for euros or pounds or pesos? The people at the hotel did it for free, right? They didn't charge us anything. No. They had to charge us something because that's how they made a living. That's what we see happening here, beneath the lines. The money changers were there to provide a service for the Jews coming in from the countryside and surrounding areas. The problem was that this exchange rate wasn't very favorable to them. And these money changers took advantage. The same thing happens with these pre-approved, priest-approved, sacrifice-ready dogs. Sorry, sheep, cattle, doves. My mistake. I got the Mad Libs mixed up. These pre-approved, priest-approved, ready-to-purchase sacrificial animals, which made sense that they were there, but the taking advantage of didn't. You see, these people's greed won out, which is why you see Jesus getting so upset at the perversion of God's temple, where we see Jesus' righteous anger come out. But we seldom see that. Jesus' dis- Jesus's display was just that righteous. As he enters a temple, he immediately cleanses it. Now before I get, go any further, I want to make one thing very clear, is that some of us come from a tradition where we might have been told that getting mad is a sin, or that being angry is just something that you shouldn't do because it's wrong. I want you to just Put that in a box and close it and tuck it in a closet way far away. Because being angry is natural. Getting upset is okay. But it's what we do with that anger that happens next that dictates if it is good or not. Anger is an emotion that we have been gifted to by God. And if we tuck it away and don't allow ourselves to experience it, then we aren't honoring ourselves or God when it happens. Getting angry should call us into action, should spur us into movement. Jesus got angry because he saw injustices happening. Things that struck against the very fiber of who Jesus was, those taking advantage of those who could do nothing made him act just as it should do to each of us. But being a loose cannon and getting angry for the sake of being mad is something that we should probably work on. Now I, for one, like this story for a bunch of reasons. I like it because Jesus puts the temple officials in their place again. I like it because we see Jesus show some raw emotion. I like it because we are reminded yet again that Jesus is a real person who felt real things. I was struck in our conversations during Bible study this last week about how much we sometimes struggle with Jesus getting upset. That showing raw emotion isn't something that we're maybe supposed to do. It's as if we were seeing another version of Jesus the two Jesuses. I think we struggle at times because we often expect Jesus to be this meek and mild, humble character that we read about 
all the time when in reality Jesus was a person. To see Jesus lash out like that is far from what we expect. But that doesn't make it wrong because Jesus was being true to who Jesus was. And it would stand to reason that Jesus was different with his disciples, his closest companions, than he was with everyone else. One thing is for certain in this, is that Jesus was always authentic. What I mean by that is that he never said or did anything to placate a certain group to gain favor. He told it how it was. He was calm and collected, which would infuriate the priests and the scribes, but he never took it to a place where it didn't need to go. Let me ask you a question. Are you the same person demonstrate the same personality with every community that you are a part of? Your family, your church, your work, your friends? No, probably not. There is no, sorry, these are, these are parts of us when we're with our friends and our family that not everybody gets to know. Those parts are saved for the people that we are closest to. They get to see our flaws, they get to see us at our most vulnerable. Because it's part of being human. And Jesus stepping in and stepping up to the plate and demonstrating his righteous anger in the face of something that was perverting the temple of his and our God sets an effective example for each of us. Being authentic and true to oneself isn't always an easy thing. Certain groups may expect one thing from us, but when the very fiber of our being tells us something perhaps that we can't sit idly by, that we need to stand up and act, that we need to say something, and we do it. If we don't, then we stifle that voice that God gave each of us. Not using that voice doesn't honor us or God. Our voice should never cause harm to another, though which is important for us to remember. Speaking truth is one thing, to stand up for someone or yourself for that matter, but using our voice to cause harm, friends, is not Christ-like. To stand up and live into who God has called each of us to be means that we are called into action when we see something wrong. It means that we might need to speak up. It means that in order to be authentic in the moment, we might need to do something people might not expect from us. No one expects us to ditch our various hats and assume a one-size-fits-all approach to each group that we encounter. I don't think you want to see the hat that I wear with my parents, because if I'm being honest, I sometimes still whine. You certainly don't want to see or don't want the perceived condensation condensation, sorry, condescension that would come from me wearing my parent hat around you or the occasional short fuse that accompanies it. But what Jesus' example does do, however, is remind us that there is always room for us to be more real, more of who we are with each group, to use that voice that God has given us to do good to stand up when we see injustice, to stand up and stand up for when others might not. Now our journey through Lent is an opportunity to work on ourselves. We've got three weeks left until we enter Palm Sunday. May you use that time to find a way to better use the voice and presence that God has gifted each and every one of us with. Amen. I invite you to join your voices together for our song of the day.
People of God, with justice-seeking Christians around the globe, let's confess our faith as recorded in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we enter a time of prayer together, uh, I encourage you to be thinking of those things that are weighing on your heart that you would like to lift up as well. Also, uh, when in the prayer petitions, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you can respond in your heart, hear our prayer. Led by the Holy Spirit and the whole people of God in Jesus Christ, let us pray for the church and all of those in need. God of our lives, you call us to see the injustices in this world. But far too often, we sit on the sidelines in fear. We act in inauthentic ways. Equip us with a bold faith and a bold voice to step up and speak out when we see injustices. Help us understand that we partner with you and the building of this kingdom of yours, one bold act at a time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we give thanks for the pink cotton candy sunrise that we had this morning and for the warm signs of spring weather. You have gifted us with this beautiful place to live. Help us to never take this clean air in this beautiful land for granted and for us to understand how our actions impact everything around us, from the things that we buy and how we buy them to the policies we enact and allow. Help us always to see clearly how all of what we do affects the other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the whole world, as we watch the news, it seems as if there is violence everywhere. Today we pray for peace, peace for all who live in violence, all who live in hunger, all who mourn this day. May they know your healing presence and may we, your faith-filled people, work together to bring peace and healing and wholeness to all corners of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our health, we are hopeful as we hear of those that are receiving their vaccines. The light is at the end of the very long tunnel. Keep us encouraged and looking forward as we continue to travel this long road together. Grant us patience and health along the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our students, there are so many ways in which we can engage in how you are active in this world. As we seek during this Lenten time to bring an education to our nine students from our sister church in Kitamali, Tanzania, we lift these young people in our prayers to you this morning. This morning we pray for Brian, for Raja, God love, Innocent, Joshua, Lightness, Meshach, Nevis, and Tumaini. Grant these students good study habits and a thirst for knowledge. Surround these students and their families with your love and guidance. And send your spirit to rest mightily upon the Kitamali people. May their crops grow strong and their faith burn brightly. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
God of healing, may those who call out to you in great faith find your heart open to their cries. We ask for healing for the sick and suffering for so many that are dealing with so many health concerns. These many names we left up to you. Noah, Morgan, Dee, Don, Chris, Lori, Bev, Anne, Carol, Anna, Kirsten, Steve, Ryan, Margaret, Sinea, Sherry, Marlene, Gail, Ida, Jim, Tishan, Dave, Julie, Donna, Lisa, Marty, Mark, Leslie, Jerry, Marie, Nancy, Gwen, Kathy, Lydia, Roger, Pat, Bob and Lola, Mary and the Niemer family, Julie and Donna. And we lift up Jessica as she continues to struggle with health challenges. We pray that the medical team can find solutions so that she can be returned to health. And we continue to pay for G pray for Jean and Pat Gunderson at the passing of Pat's father. Surround them with peace in this difficult time. Send your healing spirit to rest mightily upon these people and to all those that we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayers. Make us reflections of your light, that the places of darkness in our world will be pierced by your light, and that all nations will be drawn to you and be overwhelmed with joy. Amen. For all of you that are here with us in person, this is our time of offering, and we do have a basket in the back that you can certainly take advantage of when you leave. For those of you at home, we're going to give you a moment now to prepare your offering, because everything that we have and everything that we are belongs to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Joe. We are about to enter a time of Holy Communion, so it is now time to get ready your little um, containers of juice or wine or cracker or bread. Those of you at home also make your elements ready. When we say that everybody is welcome at this table, we mean everyone is welcome at this table because these are the gifts of God for the people that God loves. Because in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And let's pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. You can now take your bread because this is the body of Christ that has been given for you. You may take your wine or juice because this is the blood of Christ that has been shed for you. Now, people of God, may the, blood, blood, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. Let's join our hearts together in our communion prayer. Gracious God, we have received the elements of bread and wine. We have come to the table, and because we are claimed and loved, you receive us and offer to us healing and hope. Forgive our stubbornness, heal our brokenness, challenge us to truly live lives of faithfulness and discipleship. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our sending song is... Canticle of the Turning. Praise Ben for being here. Thank you for everybody for joining us online and joining us here in person. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the halls of power to the fortress top, not a stone will be left on the stone. Let the king beware for your justice. Dress.